So we've been told about a thousand times over, if you've grown up in this country, that, uh, look, the harder you work, the further you go. It's a meritocracy, right? So put in the work and there will be results and uh, it will pay off in the end. Now, look, if I'm, if I'm raising a kid and I'm talking to them, is that something that I'm going to tell them? Like, hey, you should always try your hardest. Uh, you should always do your best. And then hopefully that pays off. Absolutely. That's, I mean, that's just like basic, um, you know, human advice that any reasonable person would say just to build uh, character, right? Uh, just to make people feel, make people feel like, uh, you know, there's a, it's a reason, it's a reasonable enough system and you can navigate your way through it by being honest and disciplined and hardworking enough. So I absolutely would give that advice to people just as a general rule of thumb for being a human being, right? Like that's advice I give myself. Hey, work harder, better things will come, right? But let's be clear about one very important part of this. The idea that we live in some sort of a pure meritocracy. The idea that everything is as um, straightforward as like sports, for example. Where, hey, it's like, may the best man or the best woman win. We're, got, we're gonna have some uh, some refs here who do their best to be neutral and objective, and it's just whoever plays best ends up winning. The idea that all of life is like that, and the economy is like that, and the job market is like that is not remotely true, right? That is horrifically incorrect. So we have a new story here that really, really highlights this. None of Forbes' billionaires under 30 are self-made for the first time in 15 years. Let me repeat that. None of these new young billionaires are self-made. So here's what they say. Their bank accounts are stacked with family money. For the first time since 2009, none of those who made Forbes' list of billionaires under 30 generated their massive wealth on their own. This year, 18 of the 25 youngest on the world's billionaires list inherited their wealth. The statistic is partly due to past self-made billionaires aging into their 30s and not getting replaced by others in the same financial situation. The business magazine reported in an article titled World's Youngest Billionaires 2024, the hefty inheritances are also the start of what's called of what the outlets calls the outlet calls a long anticipated generational wealth transfer. Trillions are expected to change hands every year as the affluent elderly pass away and leave their fortunes to descendants. The title of youngest billionaire in the world goes to 19-year-old Livia Voigt of Brazil. The college student, who has a net worth of $1.1 billion, has a minority stake in her late grandfather's electrical equipment production company, WEG. She was accompanied on the list by her older sister, Dora, 26 years old. A pair of 20-something billionaire, billionaire brothers from Ireland, who also made the list, Zehan and Firaz Mystery, are... Estimated to have a net worth of a staggering $4.9 billion each. The duo, who are 25 and 27, are the sons of the late Cyrus Mystery, a former chairperson of India's largest conglomerate, the Tata Group. Tata, Tata. Each got a minor stake in the company after their grandfather died in 2022. In 2022, Clemente Del Vecchio, 19, of Italy, earned a stake in Essilor Luxatica, the Italian-French maker of Ray-Ban, after his dad, Leonardo Del Vecchio, died. He now has a net worth of $4.7 billion, along with his brothers, Leonardo Maria, 28, and Luca, 22. The German heiress to eyewear company, Fielman AG, Sophie Luce Fielman, 29, who is worth $2.7 billion, received the fortune that her father, Gunther Fielman, left to her after he died in January. Ladies and gentlemen, we just gave a number of examples of people who are just lucky to be part of the good sperm club. It's not even the good sperm club. It's the lucky sperm club. Through random fucking chance and happenstance, your ass happened to have a fucking l -l 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 loaded family, dog. So one day the old man croaks and now you got four point something billion dollars. Four point something billion. Is there anybody who can defend this system? Is there anybody who thinks this system is reasonable? Because look, it's the conservatives who tell us all the time about the value of hard work to get ahead. We don't want any fucking welfare queens and parasites in these parts. 
I found your welfare queens. I found your parasites. I found your people who provide absolutely nothing of material value, but have everything in the world that they could ever want. More money than they could ever spend. And by the way, a bunch of these people will fucking spend that, but they'll buy three yachts, four mansions. Like this... We've seen this story time and time again. This is what happens, right? Is that the son or the daughter or the grandson or the granddaughter of somebody who's wealthy and successful and maybe did put in at least some work to get to where they were. They end up blowing through the money. They end up living lives of hedonism and debauchery. Lord only knows. Now, look, I don't know these people individually, but the fact of the matter is this. In my opinion, should they be able to inherit $2.7 billion, $4.6 billion, or however much each of them are inheriting? Some of these motherfuckers are 19 years old, 26 years old, whatever the case may be. Do I look at that and go, hey, yeah, God bless, move forward? No. No, not at all. It was actually Bill Maher who said this a long time ago, and it stuck with me. There's nobody better to tax in a society than rich, dead people. And here we have... Now, I don't know the, the countries these people lived in. It's different person for person or whatever. But the idea that they just take in all that money... Sorry, man. I'll go further. I'm not even in favor of a percentage, right? Like, oh, you take 50% and call it a day. I'm not even in favor of a percentage. I'm in favor of, like, let them max out at inheriting, like, $20 million, right? You got to... Let's say some asshole's worth $6 billion, $7 billion. Can the kids, uh, Can the kids be beneficiaries of that to one extent or another? Yeah, sure. I'll let you keep $20 million. I'll let you keep $20 million. You should be thanking me. Because what else should we do with that money? Fucking everything which is obvious. Give people health care. Give people an education. Give people, I don't know, maybe a UBI program to make sure people can take care of the basics and get ahead in life and give themselves a chance at making it. There's a million things. Rebuild the roads and the bridges and all, like... Are you kidding me? If we had a society that taxed billionaires the way that we should tax billionaires, we have all the funds we need, as far as the eye can see, to take care of the basics in that society. But instead, we don't have that. So look, they didn't work for it. They didn't earn it. They're just lucky to be the sons or daughters of wealthy people, the lucky sperm club, right? You, you tell me why it shouldn't be the exact opposite of the situation we're looking at right now. Because I can't come up with a reason why why I'm wrong on this. And if anything, you could say, hey, Kyle, you're being too kind. You say you want to leave them $20 million each? That's more money than... That, that's a lot of fucking money. They, they could live the rest of their lives without having to do anything. Well, okay. I'll grant you that... Uh, I'll, I'll grant you a little bit of favor for being in the Lucky Sperm Club, but only enough where we have the rest of that money can be used for good. Right? Because you might watch this and say, 10 million is the max, or 1 million is the max that they should get. Right? I'm being kind by saying 20. But, you know, you just can't, when you look at a system like we have now, you just can't wrap your mind around this being okay. We've all covered the Oxfam numbers, and it gets worse and worse every year. The report from, like, whatever it was, five years ago, was like, the wealthiest 28 people have more wealth than the bottom 50% of the world combined. So 28 people have more than like 3 billion people combined. And that's the old number. Now it's probably like the wealthiest 12 people. You just can't, like you can't justify that by saying, oh, the people who have that, they just work the hardest. Because that's not true. There's plenty of people who bust their ass and are, have poverty wages. Why should we be okay with them inheriting billions, but then people working full time and have poverty wages? That system makes no sense. So you guys tell me what you think about this, but it's quite a fact. None of the Forbes billionaires under 30 are self-made. None. None. Now, this piqued my interest, and I was like, hold on. I used to know a number off the top of my head as to what percentage of wealthy people are quote-unquote self-made, right? So I went, uh, did some digging. Study shows only 27% of wealthy Americans are self-made. 27%. Now look, 
you can you can uh, debate and argue over well what actually constitutes wealthy. Where's that line? Um, and reasonable people can disagree on where they think the line is for somebody being wealthy, right? But at least according to this study, they say 27% of um, wealthy Americans are self-made. Over a quarter of ultra-rich Americans did not inherit any money at all. 70% of Americans who hold more than 3 million are over 56 years old. And uh, they talk about investing. Here's the, here's the part I wanted to show you. 27% of the ultra-wealthy are self-made. So about a quarter of the ultra-wealthy are self-made. It defines them as people with a middle class or poor upbringing and no inheritance. That's only a quarter of the wealthy ones. Those are the ones who I have the most sympathy for. The ones who I think, okay, you know what I'm saying? 46% have a head start. So about half of them, almost half the super rich people surveyed, either had some inherited wealth or an affluent upbringing. And 28% have legacy wealth. People with both an affluent background and inherited money. Now, again, the devil's in the details, right? The specifics. How much did they inherit, etc.? Like, it, you'd have to do a much more complex analysis to get to the root of this. But this is certainly hand-in-hand. Hand. It's consistent with the number I used to know, which I have since forgot, of... It was either, like, billionaire, millionaires that I inherited money or billionaires that I had inherited money. Bottom line is, it takes a lot of factors that go into being wealthy. And one of the ones that helps the most is just generational wealth, inheritance, you know? And we pretend like that's not the case. And it's so funny that the conservatives and the Republicans who make this argument about, like, we don't want to have any social safety net programs because then people get addicted to those social safety net programs and they'll never pull themselves up by their bootstraps, you know? You, if you feed them once, they'll keep coming back and asking for more instead of working themselves. Right? Like, that's the argument we hear. But they only make that argument vis-a-vis -vis poor people and working class people. When it comes to the wealthy, they flip their perspective completely. They flip it completely. When it comes to wealthy people, they're like, yeah, you should be able to pass on all of your money, no taxes at all. And uh, even if you've never worked a day in your life, here's $10 billion. There's no consistency in that, and it's really fucking stupid. So, anyway, um, we don't live in a meritocracy. It's not the harder you work, the further you go. And as a direct result of that, it's incumbent upon us to try to make the system better. Actually give people equal opportunity. Give people social safety net programs that allow them to take care of the basics and make it so they can get ahead. They can do half decent. Not have some people who can't fucking pay the light bill, can't pay the water bill, don't have enough food to eat, don't have health insurance, and other people, this asshole just inherited six billion. Spare me. Hey y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop, and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.